This is just a short term, uh, I call it the nightmare of agriculture. The nightmare of agriculture. This was in the 30s, 1930s. So if science and technology, it seems like, was about to bring uh, new abundance and leisure to the world. And who would want to go back? Okay, Masanobu Fukuoka grew up on a farm on the island of Shikoku in Japan. He saw that nature was completely interconnected. And what people were doing was taking this reality, this interconnected reality, and dividing it up into bits and pieces through their discriminating mind, creating north and south, creating uh, separating the tree from the bush, from the stones, and from the plants, from the animals, and adding values like good and bad, beneficial insect and a pest, and all of these things, and then creating ideas about how life came about, how did nature come, where did it this and that, and all of these, it's, all of these thoughts and this discrimination doesn't exist in the world of nature. This is only in the world of human thinking. And then people think that, get the idea somehow that they can actually improve upon nature. And so they try this and that, thinking that they, they, that they can uh, make human life better. But because of the limited understanding that people have, they can only um, get in the way, mess things up somehow, and a side effect, an unintended consequence, occurs. And so then people deal with that consequence in the same way, with the same way of thinking that they did the first thing, and that creates a consequence, each one getting larger and larger, until pretty much we find ourselves today, all we're doing just about is mitigating the unintended consequences of things that we've done in the past. So he tried to explain, he thought this would be this idea, this understanding would be of great benefit to the world. So he tried to explain it to his co-workers and then even to people on the streets, but they didn't, uh, they didn't get it. They were living within the world of human thought completely. And it's to, to them, it seemed like what he was talking about was going back. Now, to Fukuoka, of course, this is not about going back. This is about reality. It's just this place that we find ourselves in. We don't know why, how it came about. Um, it just is. So what he decided to do is go back to his farm and apply this understanding to agriculture and therefore show its, and thereby show its uh, benefit to humanity. All of these things that we've created in our civilized world is really in a world that is in our heads. We have wandered off the path. Society has wandered off the path in several ways. One is the process that I described where we, it's the process where we separate ourselves from nature. I think anybody in the modern world does feel a separation from nature. We know there's a separation and Fukuoka pinpoints how it is that we separate ourselves by this process of thinking and discrimination and human values, and that all of these things don't exist in nature, so we're living in a separate world. So that's one way that we've kind of gone off the path. Um, another way is that somewhere along the line, and it seems to have been right around when agriculture began, about 10 or 12,000 years ago, somewhere along the line, people got the idea that human beings are different than other species, we're better. We're of more value. And that, that the, the world was given to us to do whatever we wanted. And that with, through our intellect and through science, uh, we could actually improve things for human beings. And, well, 
not so important what happens to other species. Eh, it's just collateral damage. And a third way that we've gone off the path, also relating to agriculture, is the practice of agriculture itself with plowing and the logging and the irrigation and all this agricultural management has really not been good for the environment. And we've, we've run down the richness that was given to us. So for us to get back to our original place in nature and to take advantage of the original bounty and to, boy, we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do. We've got to turn around all three of those things. But if we turn around the first two, then the change in the environment will happen of its own. Uh, because once we get into a proper way of thinking and a proper relationship to nature, then we will intuitively know how to make a living in the world, how to feed ourselves and shelter, give ourselves shelter, which also allows other forms of life to live and in, enriches the soil. And uh, we will just know that intuitively. That's the way people lived for all that time. He does call it natural farming, but let's say it's the natural way, it's the way of seeing nature directly. And people just want to, they associate natural farming with the technique. It's not the technique, it's, it's the view. And once you have that view, you enter into nature and you participate from the inside instead of as a visitor from the outside, then you'll know exactly what to do. Usually Westerners refer to that as observation. But to me, observation um, implies, already implies the split, the separation, because it's an observer and the observed. Okay, there's so many words when you think about it are only work in the world of human thought, and they don't work in the world of nature. So the idea of observation um, from the natural farming point of view is more of an interaction, that you are you're not observing, you are actually living in nature and you're getting to know your place. As you practice natural farming, that is what you're going for, is that you become so intimately connected with the place that it's an extension of yourself. But yes, observation is important because you're doing things, you're interacting with nature, you're doing what Fukuoka did, trying things and then seeing what the response is and then going that way and pretty soon you get so tuned in by following that trail that eventually you come to home and home is the state that Fukuoka refers to in a lot of different ways but as mu or as do nothing you get to the point in which you are connected totally connected right there and the feeling, there's no, there's no uh, qualitative characteristic to that place, but he refers to it in, with, as great joy, and sometimes he refers to it as a state and upwelling of love, and he really felt that love had an important role in our understanding and enjoyment of the world because it is really at the basis of everything. So you're gonna edit this? Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Um, and so this is a, this is a, you're filming, huh? That's a, yeah. funny how they look different now. That looks just like a camera. Yeah. Sorry about that. But you told me you couldn't be able to edit. Yeah. So something like that is easy, right? Or like this.